All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm just going to go ahead and open up the chat here so that we can all get to know each other. Please feel free to drop in, letting us know where you're joining from, the courses that you teach. I'll give um, some quick introductions and just some housekeeping items really quickly. Uh, my name is Hannah Kripo. I'm the content marketing manager here at Certiport. We're so happy to have everyone joining us for our Cisco Certified Support Technician webinar this afternoon. Um, this session is being recorded, so we'll send out a link to the full recording after the presentation has wrapped this afternoon. Um, all our attendees are currently on mute, so if you do have any questions, the chat and the Q&A feature are both open. We encourage you to interact with our panelists today, send us any questions or concerns that you have, and we'll make sure to address those as we go throughout our presentation. Now, today we're talking about tips and tricks for teaching Cisco networking and cybersecurity, and we're very lucky to have two incredible panelists joining us this afternoon. Our first panelist is Patty Keefe West. Patty is currently a Cisco uh, Networking Academy curriculum instructor at Santa Fe College. In addition to teaching, she is a collaborator and author of course materials on the Cisco Skills for All Learning platform. Ms. West is a graduate from the University of Central Florida with a BS in instructional, instructional Design and Technology. Patty holds a Cisco CCNP, CompTIA Pentest Plus, and other industry certifications. She has 20 plus years of experience as a network and telecommunications manager. In that position, she hired and supervised network and security technicians. When time allows, Patty can be found in her wood shop working on her next furniture project. And our second panelist is Jesse Callu. Jesse is a CTE instructor and program approval coordinator for the information technology programs at Thomas A. Edison Career and Technical Education High School located in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Jesse is also a Cisco Networking Academy instructor trainer for IT Essentials, CCNA, CCNA Security, and CCNA Cyber Ops, covering areas throughout the United States. Being a product of CTE as a graduate of Thomas Edison High has provided him the opportunity to view teaching through a different lens. Through the various partnerships he has formed with the industry, he is able to inspire, motivate, and provide opportunities to his students that truly help them prepare for their future. The training he has done in and out of the classroom combined with his unique approach to teaching has allowed for creative ways to spark the curiosity in students, thus making them continuously challenge themselves to do better. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing these slides here so that we can get to see everyone's lovely faces. And just to close out, we have um, Kim Johnson here representing LearnKey as well. So we're going to be talking about tips and resources for teaching um, networking and cybersecurity. And when we reach the end of our panel discussion, Kim, I'm going to pass the mic over to you to give us a quick demo, if that's all right. Great. Thank you. Fabulous. Awesome. So before we dive in, Patty, Jesse, I'll give you just a quick chance to introduce yourself. So Patty, if you want to go first, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, basically, you, what you read is pretty much who I am. <laughs> so the only thing is, is that I have been in this industry since there was an industry to be in. So I can honestly say I've been doing this my entire life. And recently, um, I've been developing courses uh, for the um, Cisco Skills for All platform. And we can talk a little bit about that platform because it is free. And the courses are currently um, offered both self-paced and um, we are converting them also to instructor-led. So there'll be uh, instructor-led course uh, material uh, similar to what is on the Skills for All right now. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patty. Jesse will give you a chance to introduce yourself and talk about your experience teaching IT as well. Like, hello, everyone. Um... I'm excited to be part of the panel and, and get to interact with everyone on the call today. Um, pretty much uh, what was covered in my in my intro is uh, it's, it's who I am. The unique the unique thing uh, about me is that I actually never left high school. So um, <laughs> I I was a student at the school that I'm currently teaching at. Um, at the end of my 12th year, I was uh, put through an apprenticeship program called the Success Year Apprenticeship Program here in New York City. Um, and I went straight into teaching at 17 years old. Um, and I rotated between industry and school side through this apprenticeship um, and then landed right back at my, uh, my home school. So um, I was able to see this from the side of a student. Um, I'm able to see that uh, through a, as an intern and now I'm a full teacher and now I'm uh, helping to mold other instructors as they come through the program as well. So it's great to see that it comes together full fold. So um, 
excited to be here and to work with everybody today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. And I'm going to toss the first question to you. Um, with all of your experience since you've been teaching for a while, what do you think educators can do to make IT education specifically engaging for today's students? Well, I think we need to um, to be very creative when it comes to our approach with the students. Uh, a lot of times you see uh, instructors who are going uh, based directly to the curriculum, teaching to the curriculum, following step by step. I think we need to step out of our, our comfort zone, um, stop relying on solely the curriculum and get creative, do things that the students like to do. For example, my labs are all based on um, activities that the students do day to day, so it makes them more engaging. So mm -hmm. when I build my networks out, um, I'm not just using what's in the curriculum, um, I'm building networks uh, where maybe it's it's playoff season for the NBA and, and we're setting up the network for that. And, we'll, and I'll, I'll put them in these scenarios where it makes them more relatable, um, makes it more fun and more real to them. So they actually see what's going on. Um, creativity is key. Uh, I often tell my um, uh, students that uh, I'm not here to read to you. Um, I'm not here to, to lecture you. I want it to be a full engaging uh, um, opportunity for them. Um, most of my reading is done at home. I leave that to them to do at home. When they come to my class, it's all doing. How do we get it done? And then the pieces come together. Um, when they actually touch, feel, and do, um, I think that makes the biggest impact. So as, a, as an instructor, to be engaging, I think you have to do, you have to do labs. You have to put them in the scenarios um, that they'll see in the real world. And as an instructor, um, I think you need to keep yourself in tune with what's going on in the industry. Mm. Um, you're not, you know, you, sometimes we offer these, uh, these opportunities for students to see um, job shadowing, mm -hmm. um, site visits, those things. Uh, I think you should take advantage of them as well when you go to these, uh, these events, um, ask questions, network. Um, because if we are outdated with what we're teaching, I don't think we'll be as effective as we are. There's a lot to unpack there. And I love that you said that when students come to class, particularly, it's about learning by doing, right? There's a lot that they can do kind of at home uh, to prepare themselves. But when it comes down to the most valuable thing you can do in class, I think that hands-on learning is going to be most effective. And we'll follow up a little bit later because I want to talk about some of the resources for how you've built um, these different projects and ideas that you have. So thank you so much for that. That was super helpful. Patty, I wanted to ask you the same question. What do you think educators can do or what are you doing in the classroom to make IT education engaging for your students? Patty, we have you on mute, just so you know. Sorry about that. That's all um, right. <clears throat> Jesse touched on a lot of um, my same uh, concepts that I, that I use in my classroom, but the biggest one I think that we do is a project-based learning. In other words, we talk at the beginning of, of each semester as to what the students are interested in. You know, are they interested in sports? Are they interested in history? Are they interested in whatever they're interested in? And we try to put together a, a project that goes um, along with things that they're interested in. So this is again, outside the normal curriculum. And we use, you know, shameless plug here, we use packet tracers, Cisco packet tracer, and we build um, multiple networks using it because it allows students on one computer to communicate with students on another. So within packet tracer, you can build networks that span, literally span the classroom. Uh, we mostly work in, in pairs, but you know they they are able to have their communications talk to another one. And we just had a, a semester in the spring where the students were interested in history. And what what we did as a project was, what if networks existed during the revolution? <laughs> how would we how would we put together our networks? What would we use it for? You know, all of these things that were um, related. We've done sports before. You know, we've done you know. Cisco uh, often does um, the networks at golf matches. So we started to talk about how you would do that, how you would integrate the cameras and what would mm -hmm. your security concerns be. And it kind of, by having that, that project that goes the whole semester, basically, they can all work together to kind of towards a common goal, which I think really, you know, gets them more excited than it would just be, mm -hmm. you know, sitting there doing their assignments. Yeah. 
Well, it puts it into context, right? It shows that you're engaged with the things that they're passionate about. And it also forces, I think, the instructors to be creative, right? You get to know your students and you have to modify the curriculum that you're using to meet the needs of the students that are in your class at that time. So I wanted to lean on some of the things that you shared, Patty, and, and follow up with another question is you talked about packet tracer. What are some of the other curriculum and learning materials that you're using in your classroom? Okay, we use, um, well, obviously, <laughs> since I've been with Cisco forever, um, we use the, the Cisco Networking Academy courses. We also use the um, the Skills for All mm -hmm. now that it's it's out. And the students can do Skills for All, a lot of the courses at their own pace, and especially the Packet Tracer ones, which, you know, I, I pretty much require that for every, <laughs> every course. Once that became available free of charge to everyone, and you have the lessons online that you can learn to use it, you know, then the students come in, they, they take those lessons, they come in with ideas that we can do in the classroom, mm -hmm. because they've learned this, you know, online. So it's really, you know, it, it really works to, to, to spark their imaginations. So we, we use those tools. Um, we also use some other things, you know, we, we have access to real equipment. So we use, you know, real equipment in, in some of the activities. And I, I know not all schools have access to real mm -hmm. equipment, but Packet Tracer is becoming much more um, robust mm -hmm. than it was originally. And with the, um, you know, the physical view of them, it's almost like working with equipment. Mm -hmm. And the industry itself has changed so much that most of the time network administrators these days aren't, you know, getting their tool bag and running out to the wiring closet anymore. They're working from a console, you know, in an office and they're monitoring things. So it's it's a different world mm -hmm. than it was initially. And I think the packet tracer skill set kind of leans itself into that world mm -hmm. so that the students become more familiar with visualizing in their in, yeah. what they're working. Yeah being able to modify the tools in the curriculum to meet where technology is right now, I think is super important as well. So Jesse, I'm, I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. What curriculum and materials are you using in your classroom? And is it different from what Patty has shared? And we have you on mute as well. <laughs> Sorry, for the most no part, uh, it's, it's um, exactly what Patty's doing. Uh, we're using the Skills for All Networking Academy, um, Packet Tracer, uh, like, like she said, it, it's become so robust. I've seen it from um, when I was a student and it was called the discovery and exploration curriculum. Um, and it, it, it wasn't as great. I thought it was, I thought it was spectacular when I was a student, but seeing it now where it, what it's become, it's, it's great. Um, she touched on uh, being able to span across the classroom. It's one of my favorite features of, of Packet Tracer. When we were in a remote environment, um, I taught my students how to do, uh, one of the first lessons was uh, how to modify their firewall to do port forwarding. Um, and then we'd use packet tracer and we were making these labs and the students were connecting each other's labs from their own homes. So we were apart, but we were still connected through mm. our, our packet tracers. Um, I, use, I use that. Uh, another tool that I have, and I'm fortunate to have it in my school, but I, I suggest it to every instructor out there. If you have the ability to work with your school, to have access to the actual infrastructure, um, I think that makes a huge difference. Uh, my students are the, are the IT department for my school. Uh, we have about 4,000 devices for one-to-one. -one. Uh, and my students, they, yeah. they fix it all. They, they, we, try, we don't call help desk. Um, we, they go out there, they work on the routers, they work on the switches. Um, they, they turn ports on, off. Uh, they're doing the whole, the, the entire infrastructure. Uh, and I think that gives them such a great experience. Uh, during class, the phone rings all day. I have someone who's taking the calls, someone who's dispatching the students. Um, you walk into my classroom, organized chaos uh, but uh, they, they have they have so much fun doing it because they're actually working with the customers they're working mm -hmm. with clients and then and, and it's and, you know they're, they're customer facing sometimes they're doing things remotely we use Cisco Meraki at my school um, and they love it uh, they use it for our mobile device management and we use it for remote access as well um, so giving them the experience to do real jobs mm. I think it's, it's, it would be cool I know it's not possible in every school um, you know, securities, things are strict. I'm, I was fortunate to have that program in my school and it's been running pretty well. 
um, instructors drop off devices for students to fix. Sometimes they may have a company, we'll go out there. Um, we're actually one of the hubs for our city. Uh, we'll go out and wire labs for other schools, set up, mm -hmm. help set up their academies, uh, things like that. Sometimes we'll get calls or we'll set up events. And real world experience is key. Uh, Packet Chaser has become so robust in making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I also implement a lot of uh, my classroom is very competition driven. Um, so we're, we're always competing against each other. I do the skills we'll say competitions, the cyber patriots competitions. Um, and I, I, I revolve my classroom around these competitions. Every student competes. Um, and, and, you know, we're all on an equal uh, playing field. But when we get to the final rounds, you mm -hmm. know, they're, they're, they're fighting. They're all fighting against each other to win. And it's, and it's healthy competition. It's, it's friendly competition. Um, when I build labs, uh, students, they bug each other's labs and, you know, see who can <laughs> fix them the fastest and things of that nature. So uh, the tools are all similar. Um, we're all, you know, we're all using Packet the Academy. And I think it's just the way you implement it makes it so much better. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm curious, this is kind of a follow-up question to what both of you have shared. How have you come up over the years with these creative approaches? Because I think there's all of these resources that are available, but each educator is probably going to apply it in a little bit of a different way. So how have you kind of tested what works with your students and what doesn't to avoid pitfalls, I think, for some other educators who might be listening? Jesse, we'll come to you first. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I always tell my students it's, it's okay to fail. Um, mm. We don't know everything. Sometimes when I started uh, teaching, I didn't know I didn't know at all. Um, some concepts will come up, and I'll, I'll be honest with them, and I'll tell them, "Hey, we'll sit down, we'll figure it out together, uh, and, and we'll learn it together." Uh, my my, you know, I don't know everything that's advanced, so I use my classroom as the sandbox as well. Mm. Uh, we learn together at at some point, um, and they'll tell me if it if it worked or not, or, or you know, I, I have that open relationship with the students um, to let me know, hey. Was it fun? You can let me know that it was boring. We could try another approach tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but I think most of my methods come from um, relating to your population. Mm. Uh, you know, just feeling them out at first and getting to know them uh, at a level that um, you can help them by making it personalized. Yeah. Um, personalized instruction, I think, is, is key. It makes the students, they, they want to be in your classroom. Um, they're not bored. Uh, they're happy to be there every day. Um, but I, tr I just try it out. I try it out and move forward. Um, I, I want to move towards uh, this year. I'm, I'm, I want to move towards a, a classroom environment. I'm restructuring my classroom. So we're, we're all sitting at a conference table. Mm. And I want my, this, and I'm going to try it this year. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want my classrooms to run where they're not taking notes. We're just talking to each other. Yeah. And, and I, I want to build these conversations revolving around the topics that I'll be covering. Um, and I'm going to try it out this year to see if, it, if something that they'll retain and, and make it fun it would be like you're talking to a friend and mm. going over 45 minutes yeah. um sort of like this so we're, you know enjoying the conversation that we're having here and we're all taking away something from it um because we're making it that relatable so i say don't be afraid to try something new yeah. Yeah. with it just if, if you fail you fail but that's how we learn i love a good sandbox right you can't help but <laughs> i think test some things out and having that continuous feedback loop with your students to be able to test things like that is so important to have that relationship where they feel like they can tell you, please never do that again, right? Or that was so great. So being able to get that uh, honest and open feedback is super important. Patty, I saw you smiling, so I'm, I'm anxious to hear your thoughts too. Well, I was smiling about the sitting around the conference table because probably about four years ago, we went to having chair mobile chairs that have the little fold down desks so that when they're working at their regular table, you know, that they can fold the armrest down. Mm. But when we just move them into little circles to work together. And I was just smiling about it and talking about having the conference table because I, just that function changed the whole classroom dynamic was they could just roll their chairs into a, a, a group of four or a group, you know, of, of just two and work together and, you know, the way that we work the networking is it's always you, you don't network by yourself in real life. OK, <laughs> you might at home, but in real life, there's a team. So you have to learn to work with the team. But I also laugh what Jesse said about, you know, you can't know everything. In my classroom, there's a sign that says I can't go two days on what I knew yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and in this industry, that is a fact. 
Mm -hmm. So it, it is a continuous learning opportunity. So the, yeah, I tell the students that all the time. I learned this three days ago, so <laughs> let me show you this. <laughs> So we're all going to test it out together. And I think that that it's really good for students to be able to see educators, I think, in that type of setting, because it shows them, you know what, it's okay to be a lifelong learner. It, it's something that never ends. And even when you get to the point where, and I wanted to talk about this next, where you're certified, the technology still changes. You still have to be able to kind of evolve um, and move forward and maybe even recertify. So I wanted to talk to you, Patty, about what role in at your classroom does certification play we've talked about curriculum and projects and things like that where does certification come into the mix it's a goal mm. okay um, most of my students have not been employed in this industry before and i'm sure jesse's in, in the high school environment are also that way when you go out to get a job and you have no you know real experience doing doing this the skill set you know at least having the certification you know, it may not say, okay, yeah, this, I can put this person right out there and they're going to do perfectly. But what it does say is the student is dedicated enough, mm. goal oriented enough, and knows, you know, I cannot emphasize this enough because I hired, you know, I, I was a network administrator for 25 years, network and telecommunications. And I can tell you that if it came down to it, if a student came in, they were eager, they had a certification. At least I knew they knew the vocabulary, mm -hmm. that I wasn't going to be explaining to them basic concepts, basic, you know, terminology. You know, if I'd say, go, you know, go into the wiring closet and connect these two, uh, you know, switches, they would at least recognize this is a switch <laughs> and this is how I connect it. And a wiring closet is a place where there's all these mm -hmm. <laughs> racks and things because I didn't have to sit down and explain to them what we were talking about first before what I wanted them to do. And certification for, for entry-level people, it gives, first off, it gives them confidence. And secondly, it gives the person hiring them confidence that this person was at least dedicated enough to spend the time, the extra study time, the money in many cases to actually get that certification. Uh -huh. So you can't undervalue it for, for entry-level positions. I love. Thank you so much for that, Patty. That's incredible. Just thinking about there's a baseline level of understanding, right, of competency when someone comes in with that certification. I think that that's super important for those entry level jobs. Jesse, let's bring it over to you. What role in your classroom does certification play? Well, for my school, um, our high school is special. It's our current technical education mm -hmm. high school. Um, they're leaving with their uh, their regular high school diploma for academics. Um, in addition to that, they're living with a diploma for CTE. Mm. Um, and in order to get this endorsement, the CTE endorsement, uh, they must take and pass the certification um, that's tied to that endorsement. So we have uh, 13 career pathways at our school, mm. and each one of them culminate in a certification. Um, uh, we require the students to take the exam so that they can, they can get the endorsement. Uh, however, again, it is, it is a goal. It is, it's something that... that uh, you know, we're, we're, we're aligning our forces to these industry recognized certifications and, and they're not easy. And, mm -hmm. and like Patty said, if uh, a student is taking and passing these um, certifications and they're coming into the job as an entry level tech, um, I don't expect them to put the entire network together. But again, they're, they're going to understand, they're going to understand the concept, they're going to understand the theory. They can, they can have a conversation with you. Um, they'll know how to ask better questions. Uh, so I think, um, all programs should end in a certification, whether it be the most advanced one or the most entry level one. Um, our students start taking certifications when they're 15, that's the 10th grade. Wow. Um, and, and we kind of scaffold it. So every year they'll take this, uh, they'll start with the easier one and they'll move their way up um, mm -hmm. until the 12th year. So for example, my networking class in the 12th year, we offer them the CCNA. That's a very tough exam. Mm -hmm. um, but if we have high school students that are leaving there with that certification. Uh, it's very remarkable on, on their end. Um, you know, we tie our our our, um, our programs are tied to certifications. See, in order to be an approved program in New York State, we need to have an industry recognized certification uh -huh. aligned to our program. So we have to do it. Um, but for the students, it's, it's it's just giving them that one step up over everybody else. Um, we also tie our certifications with uh, post-secondary partners. 
Mm. So we have colleges that are giving students credits for taking the certifications, two, three credits. And, and you know, college is expensive. And if you're leaving a school with six credits, um, that's the way we probably, you know, we pitch it to our students. You're leaving mm. here with six credits. You're, you're, you're saving you, your parents, whoever, a bunch mm-hmm. of money. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's great in terms of industry and going out into the workforce. Um, but we also give them the option to, to make it work for them if they're going into a post-secondary setting as well. Yeah, right. There's there's multiple pathways, right, to success. And I think both of you are evidence of that, that you go through different paths in your career and that certification can play a role in whichever pathway you choose. So I wanted to ask maybe a follow-up question for both of you in thinking about these students that you've worked with. Have you seen certification have an impact on them? So Jesse, we'll we'll talk to you first. Do you have any specific student instances where you've seen certification play a role in their success? Definitely. Um, I had students, uh, I actually have one this year. He, he graduated, he, uh, he took, he started taking certifications early. He really wanted to compete. So um, I started to give him his material a lot earlier than everybody else. And he was going through it and he was taking the search so that he could be on top um, for these competitions. Um, but he was doing it for something that he enjoyed. And he's leaving my school with 21 college credits this year Gosh. because of the certifications that he took. Um, and that's a lot. That, that sets him, that's like two semesters of college mm-hmm. that, he, that he's leaving with um, just because he took the, uh, the, um, the certifications in high school. Um, I think it's great. I have students who leave my program, they go straight into industry. So they're, they're working and they're going to school at the same time, but they're working for great companies. Um, they're going in there. I have a few students, quite a few students who went through an internship program with, uh, with Meraki. I have one, three of them currently working for Meraki. Uh, one's right now in S1 position. That's right under the top guys as, as an engineer. Um, where they've been out of high school for three, four years now. Uh, so, and, and, they're, and doing, they're doing well for themselves. I have students working for CQ, doing uh, network security and and then they're only they're only getting this because of the work they did, and, and then and they come back and tell you and say, "Hey, I went to college, mm-hmm. but what I learned in high school was totally different. Um, it was more targeted. Uh, it was targeted to the position that they wanted to fill, and and they're very grateful for it. And and you know, here I'm seeing in the chat, back. you have people dropping in too, commenting about a couple of your students now working for Cisco as a networking engineer too. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see, and you know, one of the things uh, that I oh I, I wanted to mention one thing about the certification for instructors. Um, please keep your certs up to date as well, uh, mm. because you, you you need to, you know, you need to know what your 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 students are up against. Yeah. Because the certification that that you took a couple of years ago, three years ago, it's not the same certification mm-hmm. now, and it's it's not the same content. You know, something as little as you know, I, I speak to a lot of instructors around the city. The misconception uh, about the A plus, it's nothing to repair anymore. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're taking the certification, you keep it up to date. I think. Well, I didn't want to deviate, but that, yeah. I, I want to mention that. <laughs> Keep your keep your certifications up to date as well, uh, but yeah, uh, these certifications are having a huge impact on the students. Um, again, you're not going to get everybody certified. Uh, yeah, it's you know it's it's a great goal as an instructor to have 100 percent certification, but we have some tough certifications out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but just know that the ones that are, are getting it are the ones that are really going to to, to like prosper and succeed um, and take it to the next level. Uh, I keep a really close alumni uh, connection with my students, mm. so they come back all the time, year after year after year after year, to give back and sit in the classroom, train the students, go through what they're doing in the workforce right now. So um, sometimes we look for these partners to help uh, cultivate our, our programs. It's, it's sitting right in front of you, because when they graduate, they're going into the jobs that you prepare them for, and they know the program better than anybody else out there. So mm-hmm. we'll come back and tell you, hey, this is what we have to fix. So Certifications has a role in all of that. Uh, it's making these great leaders. And um, I think to offer a certification in your program is the best thing that you can do. Oh, I love that. I think that that's wonderful. And being able to hear about the impact that it has on students is super rewarding, I think, because you want to know that what you're teaching in the classroom has long-term in- impact. And so having those students come back and share that testimonial, I think is really important. Um, Patty, I wanted to get your thoughts as well about students that you've seen leverage their certification successfully? Well, you know, where I teach, um, both of the, of the colleges I teach at are former community colleges. And um, in Florida, you know, we have the University of Florida and we have um, Florida State University. These are mm. huge universities. Their IT departments are populated by our certified students. <laughs> 
<laughs> they they go through our program, they get certification, and they have done so well that the, the universities are now requiring their IT personnel to get the certification because our students have done so well working working there. Oh, that is fabulous. I <laughs> I love that that initial level of validation has got to be so so satisfying for you guys. Oh, it makes see. me laugh. I go over, you know, I go over there and I know everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, oh that okay. is incredible. So this is the University of Florida IT department. I oh, that, that is incredible. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked it's about funny that she and, says that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's funny that she she says that um it's, it's the same thing in our school. It's it's we have I think we're up at 87% of our teachers at our school came through our programs. <laughs> so it's 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 cool to see that the student, you know, I taught two, three years ago and it's now my colleague. Oh, yeah. so it's, it's it's rewarding when you see, yeah. see that. Well, so I wanted to build off of that actually with my next question. Um, we've talked about some of the students and kind of where they've landed as a result of their certification. What what types of jobs have you seen these students go into um, after they've graduated or earned their certification? So Patty, we can come to you first. Usually like second level or third level help desk, um, we've seen them um, just recently with the with your cyber <laughs> uh, certification. We've seen more and more of them going into the security areas, which you know, kind of in the past we haven't really had that integration that tightly to mm -hmm. get them, you know, a certification at the level, you know, an entry level cybersecurity certification. So you know, with the with the um, your cyber the certiport cybersecurity certification we've got now students uh, and i laugh because there's one over at university of florida <laughs> in their security department but yeah we have we have seen that you know advancement also now where we weren't seeing that before mm -hmm. so that's that's really you know having these new entry-level certs is really making a, a you know an impact well, and to Jesse's point earlier, I think the CCNA exam we know is incredibly challenging. So having kind of this step in between to get students ready for some of those additional higher level certifications is really valuable. Jesse, let's let's come to you. What jobs are you seeing? I mean, besides the ones that are working as your colleagues now, what other jobs are you seeing students um, land with their certification? Well, right out of high school, um, I have uh, I'm seeing a lot of my students go work for their, for their colleges, mm. their universities. Um, they're going to school and they're working to help us, uh, and and they're getting they're getting those jobs. Uh, and they're telling me they're getting it fairly easy because of the experience that they had in the classroom and the certification that they hold. Um, sometimes they'll even come back and tell me that the the people that are that are working above them they don't even have the certifications that uh, that they hold. So um, that's that's the most immediate job position that they're holding is the help desk positions, um, and the pathway for most of my students have been network engineer um, mm -hmm. network engineer and now i'm seeing more and more uh cyber engineers as well yeah. um but their pathway was they started help desk and they moved up to, to uh, network engineering and um ne uh, network administration and that sort of thing but um yeah that, that pretty much they're following in the in the role of of uh an administrator uh, network administrator or a security yeah. administrator that's awesome and I know that a lot of the success of these students comes down to the work that you both do and all of the educators who are in this session to really help your students be successful and to learn what they need to know, not just for the certification exam, but for moving up in, in their careers. So I wanted to kind of close things out and then we'll go to some of the questions that we have um, after Kim's um, demo. But what tips and advice would you share with educators who are looking to integrate certification into their course, or even just about teaching networking and cybersecurity. So Jesse, we'll start with you. Um, one of the most important lessons that, I, that I've that i learned throughout my time on teaching was, uh, um, this is a, a fast paced in, uh, industry that we're working in and we're, we're keep preparing our students for. Um, I think one of the best pieces of advice that I've learned and I can share with everybody is we're, we don't have, to, we're not teaching, not only teaching the students the content, we need to teach students how to learn mm -hmm. um uh so that they're able to move out and adapt in the environments that they're part of you know we can't teach you how to work for every company but we can teach you how to learn and how to ask uh, valuable questions how to analyze how to you know um keep moving and uh, um self-motivation things of that nature 
Um, but my philosophy is always a, I'm, I'm teaching students how to learn, um, mm. not just the content. Um, we're giving them the foundation, uh, but we need to make them better learners. So when they enter the workforce, they're, they're not put up against any challenges that'll hold mm. them back. Um, again, it's, it's changing so fast. What I taught them this year, next year is probably outdated. So um, keeping them being able to, to move at that pace, uh, learn at that pace, fast paced mm -hmm. learning, um, I think it's very valuable to the students. Um, in, in, in terms of uh, certification and curriculum selection and, and course offerings, um, I, I think uh, we all wanna aim for the, the highest certification and mm -hmm. you know, the top one, but I, I think you need to evaluate your population um, the, the community that you're serving uh, and, and do things in, in smaller stepping stones. Uh, I think when you do things in small step, stepping stones, you'll have a, a greater chance for success. Um, scaffold your, your programs. Um, I, I know at the high school level, we were able to do that because we have the 10th, 11th, 12th grade. Um, so we'll start off with, again with, with a, a certification that's very entry level and then work their way up so that they can, um, they, they understand the content better that way and trying to push uh, one of the hardest certifications on mm -hmm. them and, I, and kind of pretty much forcing them to, to retain this knowledge uh, instead of understanding it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, teaching them how to ask questions, where to learn, where to go for information. That's a lifelong skill, right? That will serve them whether the technology changes or not. That's awesome. How to use the information. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a time where the information is there. Um, and we have to, we just have to uh, accept that. Um, look at, look at uh, AI, for instance, it's there. The information is there. Um, but we have to teach them how to utilize that information effectively. Uh, you know, you don't have to remember everything in words. Uh, click mm -hmm. your button and look at the information. But how do you implement that information so that it's effective is key. I love that. Patty, I, I want to make sure that we give you some time as well. What tips and advice would you share with our um, our attendees today? And we have you on mute as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that ought to be tattooed on my arm somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of us post pandemic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> You're on mute. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, uh, be, you know, working at, at the community college level, a lot of what we do, you know, we can, we can, you know, forgive, you know, final exams if they pass their cert. We can, you know, um, give them credit for, you know, we, we do offer some courses in what we call mini semesters. Mm. So in some cases we can give them credit, you know, for the, for the mini semester course, if they obtain a particular certification. So there's, you know, there's incentive for them, especially if, you know, if, if it's, if it replaces a course for them, that's a, that's a big deal mm -hmm. because, you know, these are, a lot of our students are paying out of pocket mm -hmm. and it's really, you know, if they can get out of school earlier, <laughs> it's really, a, you know, a benefit to them. So, you know, by offering them that opportunity, we also off offer the students the, you know, the idea that, you know, they can get out of taking, a, you know, a proctored final exam if they pass the certification. So, you know, there, there are some good incentives. Uh, we also have an internship uh, program that, you know, when they obtain the certifications, then that moves them up a bump on the mm -hmm. on the internship list. So they get you know, a, a better opportunity to get an internship. I love that. Thank you so much. This has been so helpful. And we have quite a few questions actually that have come through the chat and the q and A. I've written some of them down and pulled some of them aside. At this point though, I think let's pass the time over to Kim for a quick demo. And Kim, let me just make sure that I have you sure. able to share your screen. Okay. And we'll, I'll be answering some of these questions in the Q&A as we're going through them. And then we'll close out, I think, with um, some live Q&A as well. So Kim, whenever you're ready. Perfect. Thank you, Hannah. And I'm so excited to be here, you guys, and to kind of share um, and touch on what all three of you have actually explained today. Um, I'm again with LearnKey, Vice President of Customer Success. And for 15 and a half years, I've been working with teachers, instructors, um, and hearing all the pain points of what both Jesse and Patty have just uh, relayed to us. Um, giving these students these stepping stones and introductory certifications is huge just for them to understand what direction they may want to go. Maybe it is networking, maybe it's cybersecurity. 
Um, but these entry levels are, are one stepping stone to these higher IT exams that are incredible. So we at LearnKey are super excited um, for these new Cisco opportunities. Um, we personally work with a lot of adult students, helping them achieve these certifications and on into IT pathways. Um, so I'll kind of share a few best practices and how to kind of navigate through the LearnKey piece. And Hannah, hopefully you can see my screen now. Yes, I can see it. it looks great. Perfect. The Gmetrics. Okay. So LearnKey has partnered with Gmetrics in addition to CertiPort, and we kind of launched part of a Learn Practice Certify. So this just ensures that the pathway is being covered for the certification that CertiPort's offering. Um, and as an authorized partner and, and publisher, we are obligated to map to those objectives. So we, when we create these courses, you guys, we don't envision, you know, as Jesse and Patty have relayed, you know, teachers sitting in the back of the room and a bunch of kids with earbuds or students with earbuds. It's meant to be a supportive resource to kind of help um, navigate and hit all those objectives um, in making sure that you have those covered for your students. Also, some of those students, and believe it or not, I'm super outgoing as, as an adult, but as a kid, I was that one and a student that wouldn't raise their hand. I was too scared to put myself on the spot. Um, so it becomes a resource also that they can go in and review uh, as needed just to get more information. So what I'm going to share today on, on the screen, we are logging into the Geometrics platform, but LearnKey courseware is offered on this uh, platform, and that enables a lot of things. For you as an instructor, it allows you to manage, you know, the licenses right in one place, giving access codes to both their learning and their practice to prepare. Um, uh, from the student side, it also gives them one central location for learning and practice, um, just to ensure that they're ready. Um, on the adult students that we're working with, you know, they get really daunted if they don't pass that first time or they barely, you know, pass by one in the practice test or wherever they're going and they get super confident. If they don't pass on that first try, they get really you know, defeated. Um, so the one thing that we can ensure too, that, you know, with limited funding and wherever you guys might need extra resources to make sure that they're prepared, um, that's what we hope on the Geometrics platform that we can offer uh, both the instructor and the student. Um, what I'm logging into right now is the actual course. And so on the Geometrics platform, you can see they're going to have access to both their tests, their practice tests and CERP prep, and then also their courseware. So I'm going to go ahead and just log into our, our Cisco networking course. And a few features that we have here, and I think Patty touched on it, um, the key terms and definition, glossary terms, when, when these students are going into the workforce, they need to know these terms. Um, so we include this in here, not only for the exam, but just the terminology and, and making sure they're well versed in it. So we've got flashcards built in here for them to review. Uh, we've also got a memory game that they can use if they need to. Wow, you guys, that was a lucky guess. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not well versed in this like Jesse and Patty. So um, I'm more on the support side, really helping teachers integrate this to make it easier for their students to go through the exam. So that's just a few of the features. We do encourage uh, instructors or teachers to copy this, paste it into Quizlet software, um, put it into their own LMS if they like, but these are here for the students as well. Within our course, we, we have built-in pre-assessments and kind of broken out by the domains and the blueprint of what CertiPort and Cisco have agreed on this certification. So we wanna make sure that we're mapping this the same way um, and that they're covering those objectives even in order. So this might be a combination of true and false, choose all that apply. Um, and in this pre-assessment, we are giving them feedback. Um, this is really just setting a baseline of how much they currently know for this particular domain. So we always, you know, we encourage teachers and instructors to say, hey, answer to the best of your ability. It's okay if you don't know this. Um, it's just setting that baseline um, to see where you're at. Once I go in and hit save and exit, um, it will attempt to add these to their uh, reporting features so they can go in and assess where they're at and it's tracking everything that they're doing. The one thing that kind of we feel makes us a little different on the learn key side is the video based training. So we have a full production team that we work with. It's based out of Utah. Um, and we actually film this and try to showcase software or wherever we can show something visual for your students to help prepare them. Um, in addition to some project work files that I'll go through here in a second. So if you could assign this as homework, some teachers, depending on you know, the demographic and kind of what you guys are working on, some teachers present this and log in as a student, present it on the whiteboard smart board and they go through this as a group. Um, so I've talked to so many different teachers and instructors on how they use it in their classroom and as a resource for students. 
Um, but what you're seeing here is we do have closed captioning uh, features here, a full screen view, if you are gonna present it or if a student needs you know, a bigger uh, view here. And then on the right hand side, as we go through each clip, we are gonna see check marks land here on the left hand side um, so that they know where they can pick up and where they've left off each time they come in and out of the system. But also for an instructor, you get to pull reports to see you know, everything that they're working on as well. So that's kind of the video portion of, of the actual course and the breakdown. We also include labs in here. So these might just be, um, you know, uh, an image that they're clicking in and a simulation. I'm just going to click on this one to finish through here. And it does depend on how many um, we build to kind of help reinforce learning. But integrating this with what Patty and Jesse have, you know, reflected on what they use for the hands-on pieces is, is amazing to integrate with this as well. We also include a project workbook. So this includes, uh, you know, fill in the blanks as they're going through the video portion that they can type in their answers if they need to. This is also directly uh, correlating back to the objectives for the certification exam. And then this is telling us exactly what subtopic um, this project correlates back to from a from an instructor standpoint too. So if you choose to say, hey, let's go through network types and topologies, you guys forgive me if I pronounce anything wrong, um, but this one you can go in and um, directly say, hey, on page you know, 14 of the project workbook, we're gonna go in and finish these pieces. So, so these are just meant to help reinforce the learning as they're navigating through the course as well. If there are any support project files, like say they're gonna open some networking file or something that they need to modify, it'll be listed here and can be downloaded here on the support files. Um, so again, this is just made to help reinforce the learning as they're navigating through the course. The last piece to each domain is a post-assessment. So this is a closed book test, just assessing on what they've gone through um, in this particular domain. And this one is a closed book test. Um, it might be a drag and drop, choose and choose all that apply, multiple choice. It kind of varies depending on the um, course that you're in. And then we also have a submit for finish to submit it for reporting and grading. And then they will instantly receive, you know, feedback or, or the amount of questions that they receive correct or incorrect. They can take this as many times as they need to. We always recommend that the students not memorize the questions. It's, you know, definitely we might word it a certain way um, as an authorized partner publisher. We're not, we can't go in and mimic exactly what they've said in the exam. Um, and then in the practice, you may see it worded slightly different as well. Um, so really it's about understanding how to complete tasks and how to, do, you know, in this case, networking or, or cybersecurity and making sure they've hit all the protocols for what's required for the exam, but also making sure they know how to complete it. So that's kind of an overview of the actual course, um, but there's one major feature that I really want to just highlight um, for being on the Geometrics platform. Once your students go in and take the practice test in here and they, as they're navigating through those post assessments in the actual course, there is a study guide here on the Geometrics platform that I feel is a real game changer this year before our students even sit for the exam. Um, and this is a study guide. So this is a personalized um, view of where I'm proficient, where I still need work and development. Um, so if they score 50% or 51% or higher, it will move from development over to proficient. So we've highly recommended all students review this before they sit for the exam. Um, vouchers are not, you know, you know, this year coming out of COVID, I think most school districts and most colleges are really, you know, kind of recovering saying, okay, we're going to get back up to speed on where we were pre-COVID. And now it's like, how do we ensure and, and get them the best possible pass rates as we can, right? And making sure they're not having to take it multiple times um, and many times over, especially as Patty mentioned that these students are maybe investing this on their own and their own personal money. So how do we add these additional resources just to make sure um, so just passing a practice test with 700 out of 1,000 or whatever it might be, it's like, no, let's just set that bar a little bit higher. Uh, so for our students, we have them pass the post-assessment, or sorry, the post-assessment with 80% or higher at a minimum in the Learn Key course, and the practice test with 90% or higher at least three times. Just to make sure they're above that bar, I mean, what if they can pass with just two or three more questions by just, you know, taking it a little bit higher? 
Um, and I find that in this case, it takes away that test anxiety if they're going through the practice test multiple times, um, just understanding what they don't know. Um, but for any of you who are achieving this certification on your own, I think I've been on what we call on a back to school roadshow for the last 11 days, just got home on Saturday. And all of these teachers are feeling this pressure to go in and take the exam themselves because it is from your experience, you kind of need to know it's helpful to know um, what they're going to experience what to look out for. Um, so I've been really promoting the study guide for your own personal use and encourage all of you to go in and utilize this for your own uh, piece to find out what you don't know too, um, your Cliff Notes version, if you will, to find out what do I need to know before I take this exam. Um, so the, the one last thing that I'll kind of cover is really the resources that we have in addition to this. Um, we do have an answer key, lesson plans, um, and everything that we saw in that student workbook, we do have additional resources that help kind of navigate through and integrate this into your classroom too. So I think, Hannah, unless we have any other questions, um, I will support as well the um, LinkedIn and badging, you guys. This is a really big piece that our students, we had uh, a few of our students as they're achieving these certifications in the CNN or CCNAs, um, as they were adding those badges, they received job offers through LinkedIn. So some of our students, as they're adding those, make sure you're you know, adding those credentials to some of those social media pieces or your mm -hmm. resume, um, just to make sure that everybody's aware of what you've accomplished. Um, and I think that's it for me, Hannah, unless there's anything else. No, right? that's fabulous. I've just seen a lot of questions coming through about how to get okay. access. So I will just say to everyone, if you know who your sort report territory manager is, reach out to them directly. Um, and they'll be happy to get you access um, to be able to look at the material, see if it'll work for you and your students. If you don't know who that is, feel free to reach out to me directly, Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H dot Davis at Pearson.com, P-E-A-R-S-O-N. And I can make sure to connect you with a member of our team to help out with that. So thank you so much, Kim, for you, that. Kim that demo. That was wonderful. And we've had quite a few other types of questions coming into the chat. Um, so I want to make sure that we address those with Patty and Jesse. And I'll just start from, from some of the top, some of these ones that we've gotten. Um, so here's one. Uh, can you give an example of creating a networking lab in a fun way? And I'll let whoever is ready to just kind of jump into that one first. Um, well, I, I, like I said, um, we should start off with uh, knowing the interest of the students. Um, mm -hmm. I like to I like to revolve my labs around the current events um, so that it's more relatable. Uh, again, if it's sports, I'll do the most current game maybe that week. Um, the Yankees are playing the Red Sox, and you know, and it gets it gets competitive, and then uh, sometimes we deviate from what we're actually doing, but they're still understanding. Uh, mm. in a fun way uh, we're talking about baseball but they're learning how to configure a firewall you know so um, I, I relate all of my my activities to current events uh, some I've always had questions where teachers say that it's a, difficult for them to come up with the topic and build a lab and build the instruction set you can take what's already in the curriculum and just rename the devices um, <laughs> you know you can take what's already there and, and you know in the curriculum they'll label them as router one or r1 or device one mm -hmm. change up the names you know, maybe you're running a, a, I'll do like restaurants that the students go to all the time and we'll do, maybe we'll, we'll do a Wendy's and we'll do a Wendy's store and we'll just rename the routers and do cashier, yes. back room, uh, kitchen. And, you know, you're not, you're not really working too hard to create the lab. It's, mm. it's already made for you. Just, just <laughs> put a relatable spin on it. I love it. Patty, did you have something else that you wanted to share? No, I was just going to say almost exactly what Jesse said. <laughs> We work with, you know, whatever the student's topic of the week, what they, well, you know, what they're interested in. A lot of times it's stuff, just like Jesse said, it's current mm -hmm. events or it's something that they've read mm -hmm. or something they're interested in, or they come in with a, a how did, how did they do this? <laughs> you know, and we, we talk about it and then we, you know, we do take a lot of the labs out of the curriculum and just rename the devices or rename the topologies. So that they can, you know, instead of it being like it is in the lab where it's, you know, San Francisco and uh, Sacramento, because the lab was written by someone in California, mm -hmm. we, you know, change it all up and it, it becomes something in Florida or something, you know, in, in the world. And, you know, we, we've done a lot of work uh, 
both in my data science class and in my networking class uh, with space exploration. Um, so how, how, are, how are they connecting things, you know, and, and doing these things, you know, in, in NASA or in space? And, you know, how is how how are some of these satellite things working? And, you know, we talk about those things and build labs like those, you know, to show them how this happens and how it gets from one place to another, you know, how, could, how does my cell phone do all these different things? <laughs> and, you know, we just we we just take things out of the out of the normal everyday stuff, and it it does Connect make it, it with what they're learning, right? Yeah, right. yeah, it makes it more interesting. Well, so this I think next question leads in really well to that. So, uh, if you have students with certifications from high school, what role would higher education play in their education? What should they be learning, theory or more hands-on? If theory, what type? If hands-on, what type? So there's like five different questions there. <laughs> questions Patty, in since that. you're in the, in the higher education setting, yeah. I'll let you take a stab at that one. Well, one thing is, is if the students have certifications, okay, a lot of schools, just like Jesse said, will give them some credit for those mm -hmm. certifications. So there's a big incentive there. Um, the other thing is, is that depending on what it is they want to do, now, if they're going to, you know, like a college, like like I teach at, where they are very career oriented, mm -hmm. then they probably want a, you know, a 50-50 of hands-on and theory and understanding, uh, a deeper understanding of how things are actually working, not mm -hmm. just making them work. You know, there's one thing to turn all the lights on and to have the tables update, but there's another thing to understand what's happening inside that's making that occur. Mm -hmm. um, if if their, you know, career goals are to be an engineer, you know, or something, you know, a little higher level, then that's what, what when you want to push the theory side a little bit more mm. than, than where you are with just the hands on. So a lot of it is, is individually tailored to the mm. students' goals. Um, one thing that we've done, and I love the fact that, you know, now all the courses are pretty much online, mm. is at the very beginning of every semester, we have the students do a, a discussion where they list three goals that they want to accomplish because you know, from taking this course. And then we, you know, we evaluate them. And then I always bring them back into the class and say, okay, these are the top three goals everybody had. So, you know, congratulations if these were yours. But uh, <laughs> anyways, we'll we'll tailor what we're doing towards the students' actual goals. And you know, I know that that in high school, sometimes you can't do exactly that because mm -hmm. you do have some very strict curriculum rules. Mm -hmm. But when we're when we're working in, you know, in the environment that I work in, we do have some flexibility mm -hmm. as to what, what parts of the curriculum we can focus on versus, you know, we do have standards and of course learning objectives and everything, but you can throw the focus a little bit more yeah. over to, to align with what, what the students' goals are. Yeah, I love that, that customized learning experience. I think that that is really important when it comes down to the student's overall experience. So thank you, Patty. That was wonderful. And Jesse, this next one, I think is going to come to you. Has anyone done the Networking Essentials course in one semester, or is it more of a year-long course at the high school level? Um, for Networking Essentials, we, we've done it both ways, depending on what track that the student's in. Uh, for our cybersecurity track, um, the students take networking essentials in addition to uh, networking essentials through uh, certain boards, new uh, um, certification, the ITS certification, mm. um, using Gmetrics as well, um, throughout a year. Uh, if I'm teaching it at a higher level, I'll do it in a semester. I, I think it all comes down to how much time you have in a day in the classroom. We have roughly 90 minutes a day, so we're able to cover a lot more material um, then some, I know some schools only have the students mm. for 45 minutes a day at mm -hmm. the high school level. Um, but we, we're fortunate to have them for 90 minutes a day. Uh, we do, we do networking essentials for a year. I've always, um, when, I, when we've taught the networking academy, we, every course, we kind of we've always broken it up by semester. Um, so we'll do one semester, season A1, season A2, season A3, by, by, by semesters. Um, but I think, uh, that question to answer that question, I need to know how much time you have in the right. classroom, and but uh, we'll we'll do it in a year. It's doable in a year, and if you supplement it with activities and labs and and um, other coursework, you can definitely uh, if you if your students, you know, depends on their level as well. Yeah, uh, a year right. after a semester. Right. 
Well, thank you so much. It looks like we're running out of time. We have so many more questions, unfortunately, that I don't think we're going to have time to get to, but we'll make sure to keep those and hopefully be able to parcel those out into some blog content so that everyone can get some ideas for these questions that you've asked. We're so grateful that all of you took some time this afternoon and evening or you know, morning, depending on where you're joining us from, to learn with all of us. We're, we're grateful for the work that you do. And we're so excited to be able to hopefully share more of this new Cisco Certified Support Technician Certification Program with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Like I said, hannah.davis at pearson.com, and we'll be happy to connect you with a member of our team who can assist you. Um, or you can respond to one of the emails that's gone out um, to connect you with this session, and we'll make sure to respond there as well. So thank you so much, Jesse, Patty, and Kim for taking the time to share your expertise with us. And we'll make sure to share the recording as soon as possible so that everyone can get access to this information. So thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.